real time. So you see there are a lot of trade-offs here. So the basic approach actually is fast compared to other approaches, but making it actually fast, that's the two years you're, <laughs> you're ahead. Uh, yeah, for the numbers, there's one thing that is quite surprising. Uh, as, as you already outlined, uh, the, the training data actually, uh, a little bit of training data might already be sufficient. We had here 10%, that's 10% of the training data, instead of the whole training data, we just used 10%, and we had already rather good results, or comparable <coughs> results. The specificity was 95%, uh, and, and the recall was nearly 65%, and so on and so on. The best approach, of course, then used 90% of the training data, which is this 90 here, uh, and here. But again, with 10% of the training data, which is rather small, it's I think 400 images, uh, you already have usable results. And that's really cool if you, if you want to start a new domain. Uh, you don't have this hard cold start problem where you try to gather 50 doctors <laughs> and have them annotate images, which is really hard if you've ever tried that. Uh, uh, so you can, you can have a fast start. So finally, uh, the preliminary experiments show that the architecture is able to learn the classification problem from scratch. Actually, we learned this classification problem from scratch. We didn't use another model or pre-trained layers. Uh, and actually, with a tiny fraction of the, of the training data, it does work. It's not the best solution, definitely not. It's not the fastest solution, but it's actually an interesting solution because it's rather fast and uses rather uh, few data. And in our case, adding the global features did not result in increased classification performance. Yeah, that's hard to say for me because I'm a big global feature fan, but <laughs> actually they, are, they, they were not useful in this case. That's it. I hope I didn't exceed too much. <laughs> no, <that's okay. laughs>